Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick's secret stream. We are going to be doing some more Duolingo today and a really fun thing about today's episode is that it is the one month anniversary of starting this Duolingo experiment. It seems to be working pretty well. I'm definitely remembering a lot more Japanese. I'm even learning some new stuff already and uh, we're sticking with it. So that's good. Always good. Now, uh, ladies and gents, if you don't know the channel, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day and seven days a week. It's all story-focused video games on here, but right now we're not doing a story-focused game. This is a secret fourth daily stream where I brush up on Japanese through Duolingo. It's not one of the three streams of the day, so you can still see three video game streams today and every day. But if you have found today's show, then congrats, you have found a secret. That means that I do not advertise the stream on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or even on Twitch. I intentionally go live so soon after the previous live stream has ended that Twitch will not send out a notification. So you have found a secret stream, ladies and gents. If you want to see which games are being played on the channel, then type exclamation mark games in the chat right now. You'll get a full list of all nine concurrent gameplay series going at the moment. And if you like what you see today, don't forget to hit that follow button. Up top, you see a follower goal of seven. We're currently at six right now, so we're getting there, guys. We're moving. And uh, if you uh, don't know, the 15th entry in the Twitch playbook is live right now. It is called On Twitch, Failure is Your Friend. And it's all about making sure that you are never going to stop experimenting, never stop trying new things. Um, because a lot of people on Twitch actually just kind of stay exactly in their lane. They never move, they never change, they always stagnate because they're afraid to fail. And what I'm trying to say is not only should you not be afraid of failing, you should be intentionally trying to fail as often as you possibly can. That is what I do. And if you don't believe me, because you say, hey Nick, you don't fail, your, your stuff is doing really well, then uh, I go through dozens of instances where I have not only failed in large ways, like everybody thinks of when they think of the word failure, but also in very small ways, and how I have used both of those instances to not only overcome failure, but improve my channel by using failure properly. So go give that a look, guys. It's really important stuff. Um, if you don't know the Twitch Playbook, it's a free online resource I created to help all of you guys in the community either create your own Twitch channels from scratch or improve on an existing channel if you already have one. It's a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms. You can find it right now by uh, going on whichever podcast platform you prefer and searching the Twitch Playbook, or you can just type exclamation mark playbook into the chat here and you'll find a link straight to it. Now, uh, welcome in everybody to the show. We have uh, a bunch of people in here. Northlight, welcome to the stream. Welcome Space Dust to the stream with the secrets. Welcome uh, uh, Pixel in here. Welcome Pixel. Hold on, my screen is uh, is set to be really dark. I can't even see the chat. There we go. The Overmody Band getting a donation in here and Space Dust getting a cheer. A lot of stuff going on. Welcome, guys. Before we start off the show, let's go in order here and let's get the Overmody Band. We got a lot of different bands uh, who are interested in in uh, the, the well-being of the channel. Thank you all, all of these different bands. Let's get a donate message on screen and let's do a voice of Nick voice. Here we go. My name is Duo the Owl. I have never killed any owls in my lifetime. Anything that isn't an owl, I cannot confirm or deny whether I've killed it. But I never kill owls because I am one. I also have two heads. It's never portrayed in the in the pictures of me because the other head's directly behind my first head. So you can't see it, but I, that's why they call me Duo, because I have two heads. One speaks one language and one speaks another language, and neither head can understand what the other one's saying, so it doesn't really help me very much uh, in my everyday life. That's me, though, Duo the Owl. Don't come near me if you're not an owl yourself. I just, I can't, I cannot speak for what I will or will not do. That's Duo the Owl, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much to the Ilvermoni Band. Uh, for the donation is very much appreciated. Anybody who cheers over 10 on the channel gets a Voice of Nick voice straight from the wiki as their shout out. Anyone who donates or cheers over 100 gets to summon a brand new Voice of Nick voice straight from the depths of the Nickiverse. Verse, 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 verse. Thank you so much to the Over Money Band. It is very much appreciated. That is uh, going to get you on the cheer, or rather the donation leaderboards uh, this week as well. And let's get it there. In first place on the donation leaderboards, we have the Ilvermoni Band with $5. That is a gold star and anonymous donation. Thank you so much to the Ilvermoni Band. It is very much appreciated. Uh, now, let us check out here. Space Dust getting some cheer as well. Decaf's in the stream. Welcome, Decaf, to the show. Let's get an exclamation mark high for Decaf. Oh, wait, first I got to 
right duo the owl i almost forgot to get a marker for that guy uh let's get an exclamation mark high for decaf join in the stream um what language does the other head speak uh that's confidential if he told you he'd have to kill you maybe that's why he had to possibly kill so many non-owls in his day because they asked that very question Ooh, welcome decaf to the show um space dust getting in there with the cheer let's get a cheer message on here as well and let's do another new uh, voice of nick voice here we go how about this one My name is Kentucky Kanji Kenneth. I live in Kentucky, but I only speak in Kanji. I mean, write in Kanji. I mean, speak in Kanji. I mean, write in Kanji. I don't know what I do. I don't know nothing about no how, nobody. All I ever do all day is sit on my porch and pluck my banjo and say Hajime Mashte to every single person who comes by, which is all of nobody, because I live in the middle of a swamp with a bunch of gators surrounding my house. They, every day they get one inch closer to my house. They have completely surrounded me. I cannot escape, but I do get, they all speak um, uh, a little bit of English, but all, mostly they speak perfectly fluent Japanese. So I've been learning how to speak Japanese from these gators. I just, I'm not really sure what's going to happen once they get all the way up to my house. I guess I'll have to try and get on the roof or something. Can gators climb walls? I don't know. That's a Kentucky Kanji Kenneth. He uh, knows how to speak Japanese and he writes or speaks in Kanji. We're not really entirely sure. Kentucky Kanji Kenneth, thank you so much to Space Us for the cheer. It's very much appreciated. Oh, getting a, uh, a Kanji right there. I don't actually know what that one means. I'll have to look that up. Um, but let's get a marker for Kentucky, Kentucky, before I forget this whole name, Kanji, Kenneth, and uh, thank you so much to Space Dust. Did it, did it add? Yes, it did. Anybody who cheers over 10 on the channel gets a voice of Nick voice straight from the wiki as their shout out. Anyone who donates or cheers over 100 gets to summon a brand new voice of Nick voice straight from the depths of the Nickiverse. Verse, verse, verse. Thank you to Space Dust. Very much appreciated. Uh, Big opening to today's secret stream. We have the Ilvermoni band donating. We have Space Dust cheering. We have a bunch of people in here. The secret is out, ladies and gents, and that is a good thing. Welcome iStealth to the stream as well. Let's get an exclamation mark high for iStealth joining the show. Um, welcome, everybody. Once again, this is the, uh, the one month anniversary of the secret stream. This is the um, 31st day, or I guess we started on March 16th. So it's 31 days of streams. I think it's episode though number 33 because we've done a couple of double, you know, double days of streaming. So uh, that's pretty good. That that's that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to just not miss any any uh, any stream days of the Japanese learning. And even though we learn a little bit each day, it adds up. You know, yeah, it adds up. They say if you improve yourself by one percent every day, then in a year you will be 37 times better. And uh, that's pretty good. Um, Dika's saying, I learned the Huddy's word for friend the other day. Ooh, what is the word for friend? It is, um... Nejava Novada. That's the only thing I know how to say in Huddy. So I'm just gonna say that means every different thing. Uh, let's jump into the Japanese lesson, lesson, lesson. And we're going to start once again. You can see we have 31 days here. So I guess this will be the 32nd day is like the official, you know, one month anniversary. Um, and that means once we do our 50 XP today, it'll hit 32. Do you guys think the friend word is patisa? Oh, cool. I didn't know that one. I don't know that I've ever heard them say it in the, the movies. Getting that secret knowledge. Northlight was watching the raid uh, channel till you saw me back on. Nice. Well, thanks for joining the show. Definitely, Sassy Wolf is amazing as well. Sassy Wolf is a member of our community um, who streams, and uh, it's always uh, really cool to see like people who either start streaming wh like while watching the channel, or like who have been streaming and who are in the community, because then like everybody is able to sort of help each other out with you know tips and and uh, rating and being a part of each other's communities. There's so many people who are in various uh, community members streams all the time and stuff. It's really awesome. Uh, anyway, I feel very lucky that everybody on here is so cool. That's what I mean to say. So let's do some Japanese. Here we go. Ah, me, me, li, li, ka, ka, 
Can you tell what word they're trying to get us to make right here? Ah. Uh, me. Me. Di. Di. Ka. Ka. Ko. The U.S. America. America. Wow, they really, uh, they really <laughs> foreshadowed that one. Pa. Pa. Ah. Uh, pa. Me. Me. Ka. Ka. Di. Di. America. 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 Pixel saying America. That's it. That is it. America. America. So if you're ever trying to say like you're from the U.S. or whatever, if they say like where'd you come from in Japanese, um, you'd say America. Like you could say it a lot fancier than that, but they would know what you mean if you just say America. America. Di. Di. Ah. Ah. Di. Di. Me. Me. Ka. 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 Me. Me. Pixel saying, I could be Canadian. I think Canadian is Canada. Like this. I'm pretty sure that's how you say it. Uh, let's see. Uh, translate. Let me try and type this in here. Canada. Canada, yeah. Canada. This uh, character set. And you don't have to say, like, if you're saying, like, I'm Canadian, you don't actually have to come up with a new word. You just add Jean to the end of the country name. So you don't say, like, the, you know, how Canadian is, like, a different word stem. It has the same stem, but you're changing the word. Basically, in Japanese, you just say, like, Canada person, and that means Canadian. You don't have to say, like, come up with the equivalent of, like, Ian at the end of it, or, like, American, or Japanese, or Irish. You just say Ireland person. Oh, Pixel saying I'm saying that America is a big place. Yeah, you'd say like, uh, America no Los Angeles, uh, which is like Los Angeles, which is in America. Like that's what, essentially what you're saying. So you'd say like, American state, America no state. But you know, they, most of the time when you're in Japan, they ask where you come from. You know, there's a lot of places, there's a lot of uh, Australian travelers who come in, there's a lot of like, you know, various countries. So you just say America and they'd probably be fine with that. John. John. Yo. Yo. Si. Si. Ka. Ka. Ma. Ma. Mm. Mm. I think it's Los Angeles. Hold on, let's try that again. There's this whole like, I, fr I guess I must have searched one specific thing and now it comes up with this giant string. No, nope, we need it to be, stop it. We need it to be uh, katakana. They don't like that. Zerusu. Yeah, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Well, that doesn't work. There you go. Los Angeles. Got it. Because say nik no something wa person. No, Patiza. The voice of Nick is my friend. Nice. Is my friend. Nick, no, something. Wow, first, no, Patiza. Interesting. You could probably just say, I don't know what these kanji mean. It might be like a more complex version of the sentence, but you would, uh, you could probably just say, Nick, wa, Patiza, des. Because if you're saying Nick is my friend in Japanese, you would just say Nick wa tomodachi desu. Pixel saying if I ever go to Japan, I'm pretty sure they know where I'm from because of my look. Okay, well, um, I mean, for me, it's like, yeah, I'm obviously a foreigner. They'd call me a gaijin. They still do, or they, they have. When I'm there, they just call you that behind your back. Uh, which means foreigner. So they'll call you, if you don't look like a Japanese person, they're going to call you that either way. But um, yeah, there's no way for them to know whether or not I'm Australian or British or American or whatever. Also, they'll probably ask you just to not be rude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they'll just ask you anyway. Yo, n, n, ka, ka, ma, ma si. si. Maria. Maria. 
Oh, I'm typing it in in uh, hiragana. Pixel saying gaijin, that's a racist thing. It's not actually racist. It's um, it's like saying gringo. Uh, a lot of people confuse that. Yeah. Ka. Ka. Like it's vaguely disrespectful, but like not really. Yo. Yo. Mm. Mm. Ma. Ma. Si. Si. Jun. Jun. Maria. Maria. Also, gaijin Maria. just means foreigner, so that could literally be a, a person from anywhere. Kiki saying, I'm a neko. <laughs> yes, you are, Kiki. Welcome to the stream. Let's get an exclamation mark. Hi, we're Kiki. Um, what was I going to do? I don't remember what they asked me to say. Here we go. Maria. 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 John. 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 Maria. Maria. Pixel saying a cat can type. Um. Yes. John. If you look at the username, it definitely makes sense. She. She. Mm. Mm. Yo. Yo. Yeah, a lot of Americans think that a Japanese person would instantly know, like, oh, you're American. And they do kind of assume that a white person is American, but. They obviously don't know because Australia is like a huge travel destination or rather Australian people come to Japan for travel a lot because it's like really close. It's the closest place they can get, you know, plane tickets to to go for like the weekend. So they would usually assume that you're Australian or American and they can't necessarily detect the accent difference either. John to imas or they probably say John des. John des. America jin des or shushin, which means from America jin des. Hajime maste. Hajime maste. Pixel saying aren't Chinese gaijin also? Yeah. Uh, li well, gaijin literally means foreigner. Uh, it's just like a slightly less uh, polite way to say foreigner than gaikoku jin, which is the actual word for foreigner. Um, but yeah, literally anyone who's not Japanese is a gaijin, which is why a lot of people make the mistake. They think that gaijin just means like filthy American or whatever, um, but it doesn't. It just means that because we are Americans and we hear them call us gaijin, but that doesn't mean it like, you know, is exclusive to Americans or that it's racist against Americans or anything. Not that that would make any sense anyway. <laughs> Ma. Ma. Ka. Ka. Me. Me. Jin. Jin. Ri. Ri. Hajime maste, John desu. Hajime maste, John desu. Nice to meet you. I am John. America jin desu. No, it's um. Oh, they're not letting me type in uh. The stupid keyboard, like you have to click this thing to change it to a. Uh... Ga i ko ku ji n. Uh, that's how you pronounce it in phonetically. America jin So if you see here, you might recognize the character, the last character of the three uh, kanji that I posted, jin. It looks like a little wishbone. The wishbone is right there, and it means person. So you can tell that gaikoku is a uh, foreign or foreigner and then jin is person so it, america jin means american person america shushin desu america shushin desu that means i am from america hajime maste hajime maste hajime maste um america shushin desu america shushin desu yeah he kept saying, King Kong wa something this. Something involving a person. Don't know. Oh, that's. Oh, that says Gaijin. <laughs> Interesting. I don't recognize it when it doesn't have the koku in it. Because they've never taught us Gaijin in, in uh, kanji on here. Because it's kind of like 
they don't teach you anything that's like less than the maximum politeness level because they just want you to err on the side of being more polite. <laughs> Kingu Kongu wa gaijin ko kaiju desu. That's, uh, that's true, he is a gaijin kaiju. It's a good way to put it. John desu. Hajime mashite. America shushin desu. America shushin desu. Oops, we don't need jin. Hajime mashite. Hajime mashite. America jin desu. America hito desu. Desu. Pixel saying, I can understand this stuff. Yeah, so this is like um, all really, really important stuff to know. Um, definitely important. We're trying to level up our like, you see we're going down the list to get to like level three on all of these earlier ones. There we go. Nihon. Nihon. That's the word for Japan if anyone ever wants to say it. Pixel saying in kanji, screw that. Well, if you don't keep an open mind about it, it's really gonna kneecap your ability to, to speak. And you would think it doesn't really make sense, but a lot of people try to only learn in like Romaji, which is like the, you know, in the US or English characters spelling things out. But uh, it, it really, you're only gonna be able to learn like 10% as much as you would if you actually learned the, the uh, alphabet. Kiki saying, today, kyo wa nikku. It says, ima day, or whatever the word for day is. This day, Nick. Something, apri o something ta. Something regarding an iPhone app or an application in the past tense. I can't read the kanji though. You're asking me something, if I'm doing something today, or how I am, maybe, it's not how am I, because there's no question about, like, Genki or anything. I think it says, today, Nick, something regarding past tense of an app. Apudi is the, the word that you'd use for an iPhone app, but it probably also means app in the sense of, like, a computer application, or like a software. That's my guess, at least. That's how I read Japanese when I'm like on the street. I'm like, okay, I can read this part, I can tell the structure of this sentence, but I don't actually know what these parts say. And then we make a slightly informed decision and buy the wrong thing and learn our lesson. Hon. Hon. Nihon. Nihon. Me. Me. Chugoku. Chugoku. Ka. Ka. Chugoku shushin desu. Chugoku shushin desu. Um, I am from China. Shi. Shi. N. N. Hon. Hon. Uh, Nihon. Nihon. Chugoku. Chugoku. You said, how are you today, Nick? Oh, interesting. What is the part where it says apuri? That's like a second sentence there. As far as I can understand it, that just says today wa Nick. Or maybe the how are you is implied. Nick today, yeah. Because that is kyo, and that's wa, nick. So that's nick, my name, today, like, is, basically. Um, what does the second part mean? I use the translation app. Nice. So apuri, I was correct that it, like, past tense related to an app. I wouldn't have used any of these words, though. That's the thing is, like, when you use an auto-translator, you probably can't detect which ones look like more complex characters, but I think you should be able to. Like, these two characters are significantly more, like, it would be harder to draw a picture of these, basically, than these three characters, or this one, or the these two. And that's because these two are kanji, and these are the other alphabet that I actually know. Um, kanji's really hard to, to get it there. Uh, or rather, there's a lot of, there's 50,000 kanji, so it's very hard to, like, know exactly what it, which one is which um, at least at my skill level but it's easier if you try and search uh, for a hiragana translator or like a katakana translator decap posting koko de minna itekimasu 
That means uh, let's do it, everybody. Oh, here we go, guys. Yeah, so that's literally what it means. This is your quote. Here we go, guys. Wow, I said it. So let's do it, everybody, would basically be the literal translation for here we go, guys. Uh. Let's do it, everybody. I have to do that in uh, on all the Japanese streams now. Hon? Jin. Jin. Nihon. Nihon. Chugoku. Nihon I, feel, <laughs> I feel pretty good about that. I literally got, I got that right. Nihon shushin desu. I am from Japan. I'm Chinese. Chugoku. Jin desu. Or chugoku jin desu. Chugoku. Pixel saying, how do they construct the sentences? That's a, a big question. The easiest way to describe it is that they go in reverse. And it's actually pretty, um, it's actually a pretty true fact that all the sentences in Japanese basically just go in reverse. Because this is the word for uh, is, this is the word for person or Chinese person. So like Chinese person is or am. So you basically reverse it and you say like am Chinese person. They they take out the 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 i uh, if it's implied. But yeah, even in in like a long sentence, you would just basically have it be in reverse. Nihonjin. Nihon desu. There you go. Um, Pixel saying, in the street, John and Marie go. Yep, literally, yes. Um, it would be like, street in, John and Marie go. Yeah, that's what it would be. Street in, John and Marie go. But it's basically like sandwiches of, uh, of grammar. So you're like putting everything between rather than prefacing it with the grammar like in English. So like it's actually it's kind of a simplified way of describing it because if you say like watashi wa nik des, everybody knows that sentence or uh, not everybody. That's a, a basic Japanese sentence of watashi i wa am nik nik or is nik des is also am. So you're kind of sandwiching it. This is like the uh, the uh, the equivalent of am, but also wa. Kind of, you can't have des without having wa or another particle like that. So it's basically like a sentence. But suffice it to say, the easy way to think about it is that it's just in reverse. Let's see if we can get some more transit. Pixel saying Japan got way more difficult, or Japanese got way more difficult. Um, I don't know. It's, I think it's, it gets difficult, more difficult as you go on for sure. But I, I don't know. I, I haven't had as hard of a time with it as I thought I would. I mean, I was able to converse in Tokyo with six months of, of study. And that's pretty, I mean, I'm not, I don't know how to speak as well as like a regular person, but like I was like able to get by in Japan. First time I went to Tokyo, could not speak. Second time, spent six months learning, went to Tokyo, could. So like, that's pretty, you know, you can get there decently fast as far as, you know, you might want to get. You're not going to be able to like watch anime without the subtitles in six months, but you'll be able to talk to somebody in Japan. Kuruma. Kuruma. Oh, cool. That's a car. Kuruma. Den. Den? Den. Maybe for Denwa for a phone? Ku. Ku. Ta. Da. Den. Kuruma. Oh. Kuruma. Okay, it's like a hamburger. It's got like the meat in the middle and the two buns on top. Kuruma. Kuruma. Den. Den. Tanaka. Tanaka. Pixel saying I learned French in three days and I didn't study. Well, nothing against your, your French, but. How long did you remember it for? Because that's the thing, you can you can cram anything, but you won't remember it a year or two years from now. But um, yeah, I mean, I was like studying Japanese in, in the sense of like, you know, doing it every day, not, not just like cramming it. 
um, because you can definitely learn a lot of things, but that that memory won't last really. Pu, pu, ta, da, ku, ku, den is this one. Den. Kuruma is the the hamburger. Kuruma. Den. Den. Den has a little kind of like arm reaching out. Kuruma. 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 Bus is den, I guess. Oh no, basu. Bus. I could have told you that. Bus. Most uh, stuff that has a, a, the letter U, the e English equivalent of the letter U at the end, you don't actually pronounce. The, one of the big uh, easy ways to tell uh, that somebody is not as efficient in Japanese is that they pronounce it waifu or waifu, well, like the word wife, um, or like naisu or whatever. Uh, but the, the U is silent, so it's, you really just say it as wife in Japanese or nice. You don't say the U. Or des, like that that's the word everybody knows is des is the one for is, but you don't say desu. You say des. Bicycle, what is this? Jitensha. Jitensha. So that has kuruma in it, but it's it's a different um syllable when it's combined with these. That's the one I think for white, and that's for what I assume is car, or maybe just transportation. Densha wa okii desu. Densha wa okii desu. Something is big. Densha. Den. Train. Densha wa okii desu. Watashi no kuruma wa okii desu. Do you guys think you don't say waifu or naisu unless you're curly crew? Well, I mean, nothing against people who don't know Japanese, but I'm just saying that's like a, a traditional, like English speaking way of pronouncing something in Japanese that isn't actually true to how it's pronounced in Japanese. Uh, my car is big. What was the? To the office? I take something to the office? I don't think that's how you'd say that though. There's something in the office. Maybe my bike is in the office? But ikimasu is to go. Or like to, yeah, to go. We'll go. Kaisha. Chi. Office. Jitensha. Is that bicycle? Hmm? My bike. Maybe it's saying I take my bike to the office. Jitensha de kaisha ni ikimasu. Hmm. Kiki saying, have you heard about the history TV show called Nightfall? I've seen posters for it. Um, I didn't have any idea what it was, though. LA, you, you end up knowing about a lot of shows or movies without ever having heard of them before because there's billboards everywhere. There's an intersection here that we passed the other day that had eight separate billboards for Avengers Endgame. And I mean billboard, like, you know, the big billboards, not like a bus stop billboard or whatever. I'm talking about, like, gigantic, you know... It was literally like you were encircled by Adventures Endgame billboards. Densha wo tsukaimasu. Densha wo tsukaimasu. Tsukai is to uh, take or I think to ride maybe. Densha is train, so I ride the train. Or use the train. Densha wo tsukaimasu. Pixel saying the biggest movie of the summer needs publicity. Well, it's it's very debatable whether billboards help movies or TV shows at all. Most people think that, because LA, you would think that everyone in LA kind of knows about movies already because you're in LA. But like, I think it's more for, it's like a politics thing where like, you want the people who are in the movies, like you want Robert Downey Jr. and his PR people to feel like he is getting advertised, you know, by Disney. So they're spending the money more to like, flex their muscles, you know what I mean? It's 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 kind of a politics thing. 
But anyway, in LA, yeah, you end up seeing a lot of billboards for things that you don't know what they are. Basu ni norimasu. Basu ni norimasu. So that means I take the bus. <clears throat> Vin saying trailer helps more than billboards. Right, but that's what I'm saying is like, I don't think it actually, I don't think billboards are actually purchased in LA in order to tell you about a movie. I think it's in order to make their, uh, the people who worked on the movie satisfied. Densha. Densha. Densha ni norimasu. Welcome Vin to the stream, by the way. Let's get an exclamation mark high for, uh, for uh, Vin. Joining the secret stream, densha ni norimasu. That's, uh, I take the train. I mean, maybe get on the train? Norimasu. Di. Ride, get on, take. So I was right, but also get on. I didn't know that was one of the words it could be. Di. Get on. Densha ni norimasu. That means ride, get on, or take, but not to use a train. Densha ni norimasu. Oh, do you guys think there's a Batman story arc called? Yeah, I do know that. Yeah, about that's the Bane uh, storyline. Um, I think that's the storyline they sort of adapted for the uh, third movie, right? Pixel saying I'd be happy to be in the movie and do a proper performance. Well, there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, when you're in LA and there's an actor that's getting paid like you know a million dollars for a movie, and then some agent needs to set you know. It's not about the actor being happy, it's about the agent who has to sort of like prove that their job is worth the money that the actor paid them or the agency that hired the agent to prove that the agent was worth hiring. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole whole hierarchy going on. It's LA. Jitensha. <laughs> what is it? Jitensha? Ga? What is that? Yoshimi. Oh, that's su ki. I get it. It's not the entire phrase of ski. It's su yoshimi. and this one's ki. Ga ski desu. So I like biking, maybe? I'm not sure which one this is. It's That's the thing for car, but I don't know what jiten is. Kuruma. Bicycles. I like biking. Jiten sha ga ski desu. Here we go. あなたの車は小さいです。あなたの、あなたの車は小さいです。That's pretty mean. You're saying that your car is small. I mean, I guess it depends on the context, but it seems like a weird thing to say. その場所は小さいです。その場所は小さいです。That bus is small. 自転車に乗ります。um, I, I use the bike. All right, ladies and gents, we did it. Maintain your streak. I will wager those five lingots. I don't have anything to do with all my lingots. I have 65 lingots. That means we hit 32 days, which is a whole month. Now, what does this do? We don't have any more like bets we can do or anything. <laughs> we could do a streak freeze, but that's only if you think you're gonna miss a day. See, this is like you can be inactive for one day and then you'll get it. Um, let's see here. Now, Kiki's saying there's hardly anything without a political thing behind it. People would like to ignore it normally. Yeah, and when I say, I, I don't mean like politics in the sense of like presidential politics or like, you know, governmental politics. I just mean like the politics of the movie industry, you know, where like people need to justify their paychecks and they need to do all these various things. Um, and yeah, it's also for the academy because you see a lot of, I've never seen before uh, moving to LA, the billboards when it's Academy Awards season for like the two months leading up all the billboards are like old movie or movies that came out throughout the entire year but it says like for your consideration because like obviously everybody who's on the board of the academy awards lives in la so that 
then is literally just talking to the people who might be driving to work or whatever that are on the board of the Academy Awards. And it's like, hey, here's like Black Panther for your consideration. You may have seen this movie a year ago. It literally came out in January, but now it's January of the next year and we're showing you a billboard for Black Panther because we're telling you to don't, don't forget to vote for this in the Academy Awards. It's pretty weird. Um, but ladies and gents, that's gonna do it for Duolingo today. Thank you everybody for joining. This was another secret stream in the books and it was our one month anniversary. So that is pretty amazing, guys. Let's get a celebration on here. We got the Hogwarts band on standby. Hit it, boys. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Um, a month of Duolingo is a small step on the road to a larger step. I called this episode one month down, one lifetime to go. And uh, I am very much looking forward to uh, future episodes. Thanks everybody for coming on this journey with me. I hope you guys have been learning some stuff. I try to, um, you know, throughout the lifetime of the this month of shows, I try to, to break down and contextualize the things that, uh, that I find, if there's anything that I can explain about it. Which, of course, not only, hopefully that helps you guys to understand it further, and it also helps me to understand it further, because they say that, you know, teaching something is a good way to learn something uh, better, which sounds weird, but that's, that's what they say, and it seems like it works. So uh, everybody gets something out of these secret streams, uh, hopefully. Now, ladies and gents, let's jump into a raid. But first, if you don't know the channel, it's called The Voice of Nick. I play video games live three times a day and seven days a week. This was a secret fourth daily stream in which I brush up on my Japanese through Duolingo. And uh, we call it secret streams here because it is not advertised on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or even on Twitch. Um, Twitch, uh, I intentionally go live so soon after the previous episode that it will not send out a notification for the episode. That is intentional so that this becomes a secret stream. You can only find it by browsing or by being a part of the Discord, of course. Now, uh, congrats to everybody who found it and thank you for being a part of today's show. If you want to see which games are being played on the channel, you can type exclamation mark games in the chat. You will get a full list of all nine concurrent gameplay series going right now, including many Japanese language games, like the one we were just playing, Tales of Symphonia. So if you want to continue your Japanese learning on here, there's plenty of stuff to do it with, even while we're not doing secret streams. And if you like what you saw today, don't forget to hit that follow button. Up top, you see the follower goal of seven. We're currently at six, so the next person to follow will actually get us to that goal. We'll be doing a Voice of Nick Voice live on stream to celebrate. The 15th entry in the Twitch playbook is live now. It is called On Twitch, Failure is Your Friend. And it's all about making sure you always try new ideas. Because number one, you never know what's gonna work. And number two, even if you fail, that will actually help you to get better. So you should be seeking out failure as, as often as you can, because you'll either be surprised by how well it works out or you will be able to learn and improve your channel rather than just staying in one place. So give that a look, ladies and gents. The Twitch Playbook, if you don't know it, is a free online resource that I created to help all of you guys in the community either create your own Twitch channels from scratch or improve on an existing channel if you already have one. It's a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms. You can find it either by searching the Twitch Playbook on whichever platform you prefer, or you can type exclamation mark playbook into the chat below. You'll get a, uh, you will get a link directly to it. Now, if you like the channel, you want to support the stuff that I do, then consider subscribing. Subscribers get a whole bunch of stuff on here, including the voice of Nick, emote, legendary status in the chat and Discord, 200 meatballs, higher chance to win in the heist minigames, and ad free streams. Subs also get the sub badge, which upgrades with their subscriptions. Another great way to support the stream is to cheer or donate. Cheers and donators both get custom Voice of Nick voices as their shoutouts. On the donation leaderboards this week, we have in first place the Ilvermody Band, coming all the way from the US. I guess. We're already in the U.S. The Hogwarts band had to come all the way overseas to donate to us. The Ilvermoney band, uh, it, I guess it's a little more convenient for them. Thank you so much to the Ilvermoney band. That is a gold star and anonymous donation. It's very much appreciated. On the cheerleader boards, we have in third place, nobody. Second place, Meat Computer with 100 cheer. That is a purple level cheer. Thank you to Meat Computer. First place is Space Dust with 200 cheer. That is a purple level cheer as well. Thank you to Space Dust. Uh, thank you to everybody who supports these streams. It's highly appreciated and you're directly helping these shows to get better. Every single day I improve at least one thing about the family of channels here, whether it is the Twitch streams you see in front of you, whether it's acquiring and setting up new games, whether it is tweaking Streamlabs or Nickbot or OBS or any of the stuff behind the scenes that makes these shows tick, 
whether it is um, creating and posting content that goes on the social channels like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, whether it is improving the Discord, whether it's writing Twitch playbook entries, whether it's updating the wiki, or whether it is recording the podcast, all of that stuff, guys, is in large part thanks to all of you for supporting these streams by cheering, donating, subscribing, gifting subs, or gifting games. So thank you so much to everybody who does it. Now let's see if we can find a, um, a uh, channel to raid. But before we do that, let's say hi to everybody uh, who is in here. Let us see here. Do you guys think when someone like RDJ walks away with 50 million in his pocket for a movie, it feels like it's kind of unfair to normal people? Yeah, it seems like that. The I, I, I heard a really interesting uh, anecdote about that kind of thing, where it's like if you look at it only as the fact that he's doing this movie right now and then he walks away with 50 million. But there's a great anecdote that, that I, I love about this kind of thing and it's that somebody found Pablo Picasso in a bar when he was alive and they said to me, oh, I love your, your artwork, can you uh, draw me a picture? And he takes out a bar napkin and he draws a, a picture and he gives it to her and she's like, wow, this is great. And he says, that'll be $50,000. And she says, why? It only took you 30 seconds to draw this picture. And he says, it didn't take me 30 seconds, it took me 50 years. And the point is, it's not about the, the job that you did in this one moment. It's about the fact that it took you your entire lifetime to actually get the skills to make, to ever have been able to do the job. And uh, that's kind of, you know, a lot of the stuff in the Twitch playbook is like that as well, where I'm trying to say, like, make sure that you keep getting out there and doing it and all that stuff. Like, it's not about, like, success in this one moment. It's about building up the skills required to create success. And uh, I think that's... Um, that really opened my eyes, that kind of like, uh, that kind of thought process. Anyway, um, a pixel saying I would want Nick to play Sekiro with no subtitles. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that would be a heck of a challenge. That would be the true, like, even farther than the, uh, the Soul Level 1 run of Souls. You play it with no subtitles and you try to live translate it. That would be crazy. Uh, Kiki's saying that wouldn't be fair to people who don't know Japanese. Yeah, well, hopefully I'd be live translating it. Um, if you want to see a channel where they do that, actually, Dizzy Dizzy Dino, who we've uh, rated a bunch of times, that's the only person I've ever met who has done that, and I always thought that would be an amazing idea for a stream. So Dizzy uh, either lives in Japan or has, like, a Japanese PS4 uh, and is able to get Japanese video games like uh, Judge Eyes, the Yakuza People's uh, lawyer fighting game, uh, before they come out. And then, you know, they only come out in Japan, and then live translate them on stream, which sounds like a lot of fun. I hope I can join for one of those. Um, but let's go over here. Uh, we are gonna try and find a channel to raid. The way we do raids on this channel is always to raid a previous person a, who is doing a, rather a person who's doing a previous game in our playthrough series. So as not to see any info about games that we're currently playing or any games that we plan on playing. But you know what? I see something fun here and I think we should join it. Um, yep, this looks amazing. We have our very good friend, Nato Potato, who is right now doing Just Dance. And uh, if you guys know Nato Potato, Nato Potato is a really amazing uh, streamer. So make sure you go uh, in this channel and just spread that love, ladies and gents. Post some love for Nato. Uh, hold on, did I? I copied a thing that says that's kind of cool. How did that come into the chat? I was trying to copy paste the uh, the radio. It's, ooh, spooky. 716, 1716, Frostfairy says that's kind of cool and I sent a message of it. Anyway, copy down these raid emotes, ladies and gents. When you get into that chat, you wanna flood those in there. So either copy the ones that say raid uh, above them, which have all the different characters, or you can copy these sub raid emotes, which are subscriber exclusives. That has the voice of Nick TV head logo and hype speech bubble. Or you can copy the ones that Kiki posted in there as well. Thank you, Kiki, for posting those uh, with the Meatball Raid info. Whichever one you choose, make sure you copy it down now and then paste it into the stream when you get in there, ladies and gents. We want to show NATO all that love, and you will see immediately why NATO is a very um, entertaining streamer. So let's all join NATO for what is sure to be an extremely glo glorious, glorious show. Bye-bye, everybody.